Touchdown Friday. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to week number one of the high school football season. This is the season debut of Touchdown Friday. We kick off our show each week with our game of the week, and for that, we head down to Onslow County, Jacksonville, and Southwest Onslow. The Cardinals beat the Stallions last year 40 to 13 in the opener, and after that game, both teams went on to have great seasons a year ago. Jacksonville and Southwest Onslow, the Cardinals and the Stallions, the Stallions ready to go, the Cards ready to go. Jacksonville strikes first in this one. Adam Varner back to pass for the cards. He delivers the perfect ball to Tymir Brown who snags it on the run. Cards have a 7-0 lead. A 45-minute lightning delay would clear the stands. Play resumes though. Jacksonville driving in the second when Varner's pass is picked off. Taekwon Pagan steps in front of it and he returns it to midfield. That's when you'll see one of the wildest plays that you'll see all year. Michael Turner gets the handoff. And his offensive line is pushing him forward and pushing him forward. And all of a sudden, you're like, I wonder where the football is. Who's got the football? And then all of a sudden, Jacob Johnson comes up with it. And he's heading the other way, all the way down the right sideline. That's a big play in the game. They absolutely stole that one. Jacksonville is going to come up with the big shutout tonight. 27-0 was the final for our game of the week. Nolan Knight has more from Onslow County. Hey, Bailey, that's right. I'm here at Southwest Onslow High School where we had our game of the week. The Stallions were taking on the Cardinals of Jacksonville in a cross-down rivalry. And this one, when you look at your newspaper tomorrow morning, it'll look one-sided. But if you were here, you know that the game was much closer than what the final score will say. Southwest Onslow was able to move the ball up and down the field at times, but turnovers would be the difference as the Cardinals were able to score twice off of fumbles, one a strip and one a scoop and score 50 plus yards. So some impressive play from the Cardinals. The Stallions just can't couldn't seem to get things going offensively and the Cardinals are the ones who start their season 1 and 0. Here in Jacksonville, I'm Nolan Knight. Back to you, Bailey. All right, nice job. Let's stay down now in Onslow County. Northside Jacksonville was at home tonight, and the Monarchs would open up with a game against Wilmington Laney, and they would pick off Laney for their first win of 2019. Here we go. Northside Jacksonville on the punt early in the game. The Bucks with the muff, and the Monarchs get the football deep inside Laney territory. That would set up the captain, Jaquarius Conley. He's going to head right on the sweep, cuts it back. He's going to dive into the end zone, and the Monarchs are on the board after a delay. Natre Andrews is looking deep, and he's got the other captain, Marseille Miller, for the touchdown. And Northside Jacksonville, the defense comes through, too. They shut out Laney tonight, 14-0 that final. Also from down south. At West Carteret, Moorhead City, coming back from halftime, New Hanover up 21 zip on the Patriots. New Hanover on the screen pass. Jaheim Marshall. And Marshall gets a nice block, and he's headed to pay dirt, and that was just too easy on the play. West Carteret then sets back up. Michael Jones back to pass. Pump fake. He fires downfield, but Jalen Worthy, he's down there like he's fielding a punt. He picks it off, and he's headed the other way for New Hanover. The Wildcats looking good. Dorian McNeil is headed to the end zone here. He's got some nice blocking. And he's headed in for the score. And then Jones for West Carteret back to pass again. He's going to be picked off here by Josiah Shaw. And Shaw is going to take it back for six. And New Hanover has an easy win on opening night. New Hanover 49, West Carteret 7. That final. Up the road a little bit. East Carteret at home. The Mariners playing host to West Craven and the Eagles on opening night. And this one went south in a hurry. Opening kickoff. East Carteret. Kicking the football off to West Craven and the Eagles, Kane Rayner drops it, scoops it up, and he is heading left. And nobody stayed in their lane, did they? Because he is going to turn the corner and go all the way down that sideline for the touchdown. And the Eagles were off and running in this one. And then West Craven going to go to Silas Wallace from eight yards out. He's heading right, barreling into the end zone. Touchdown, Eagles. Then Wallace on the dump off is going to find his way to the end zone again. And Wes Craven goes on the road. Gets a big win on opening night. The Eagles knock off East Carteret by the final of 58 
to six for touchdown Friday. Princeton and Bamako, I think, are still playing in this football game. New Bamako coach Ron Cook with a tough opening night assignment. Princeton knocking on the door. Jaden Brooks is in for the score, barreling in. And then tack on the two-point conversion. Princeton took a 16-8 lead before the weather moved in. They are still in the fourth quarter at last report. And Princeton leads Pamlico 44-8 is that score. Look at that lightning shot right there. Jerry Jackson likes that. 44-16 now in the fourth quarter. All right, let's take our first time out. Coming up next, it's our backyard brawl. Tarboro, Rocky Mount. They got to jump on the opening night slate by playing on Thursday. It's the Vikings and Griffons in our first brawl of 19, but the weather would be the story. All right, welcome back to this first week of the high school football season. This, of course, is Touchdown Friday. Each week we present an Eastern North Carolina robbery game. We call it our backyard brawl. And for that, we take you back to last night for Rocky Mount's trip to Tarboro, the back to back state 1AA champs with a tough test in week one. And that test would last a little over a quarter because of the weather last night. Tarboro head coach Jeff Craddock, one of the best in the business for sure. He's Vikings looking for win number 31 in a row. Rocky Mount, early momentum for the Griffons. Jaquan Lynch, the perfect strike over the middle. Deshaun Lawrence has got it for the big game, but the Griffons would turn the ball over on down. Second quarter, still no score. Tarboro gets things going. Khalil Staten takes the pitch, gets the outside. Check out the spin move from Madden. <laughs> Look at that. He's out of bounds with good yardage. And later in the drive, knocking on the door, Cameron Powell gets it into the end zone for the touchdown. The PAT was no good. It was 6-0 when the rain and the lightning came. So officials suspended the game first. They called it later, and it goes down as a Tarboro win. Look at that. 6-0 over Rocky Mount, our backyard brawl from last night. At J.H. Rose tonight, the favorites in the Eastern Carolina 3A-4A opened at home. The Rampants of Dave Wilteke played host to Wilson Fike and the Golden Demons. And this was a long game. It turned out to be a good one for sure. Rose already dealing with the injury bug. Coach Wilteke, foot surgery early this month. His team would have to play catch-up early. Fike gets on the board first. Aaron Bancroft with a big run up the middle for the touchdown. He kicked the extra point for a 7-0 demon lead. Rose responds, though. 17 unanswered points. Junior quarterback Wade Jarman connects with Kevin Hamilton for the score there. Second quarter now. Jarman going to go up top again. This time he hooks up with Justin Bullock for the big gain. Off the pump fake. They settled for a field goal. Rampants were up 17-7 at halftime. After a lengthy weather delay in the third quarter, it's Fike with the momentum. 14 unanswered points for the Demons. This Damari Daniels to Octavius Carpenter. Connection, 33 yards for the touchdown. Fike had a 28-24 lead, but Rose makes the plays in the fourth quarter. Jarman and Hamilton connect for a third touchdown, and the Rampants take the lead for good. They win it 38-35. Arkin Watling has more. Well, Bailey, what a way to start this high school football season here at J.H. Rose High School. This game saw a little bit of everything. Two offenses, pretty efficient for a week one game. We saw a rain delay with not much rain, but a lot of lightning that lasted 90 minutes. After that fight came out, scored two straight touchdowns to take the lead. But in the end, J.H. Rose made the plays on offense and defense. They move on to week two, one and oh. Dave Wolteki happy with his team's performance, but knows they can improve. We gave them every opportunity to get into the game and then take control of the game. And then when we finally feel like we, we got back in control again, we just, again, just let them right back in. So we, we have to do a better job of when we get a team down to, you know, go ahead and put them away when we have a chance. We never gave up, and we worked hard and finished the game off like we should have probably a quarter before, but still got the win, so that's all that matters. Oh, it's really fun. Uh, ready for week two, too. But... I'm glad we pulled through. It was a difficult game, but I love my brothers and we fought well. And it is on to week two for J.H. Rose. They'll take the two-hour bus trip down to Wilmington next week, where they will face off with former conference rival, the Laney Buccaneers. That is the story from J.H. Rose High School. I'm Ken Watling. Bailey, let's go back to you in the studio. All right, nice job, Ken. South Central expected to battle Rose in that Eastern Carolina 3A for you. I'm in the skies at South Central before this one. Lots of defense and turnovers early in this game. Percy Edwards coming through here, and he's got the big sack for those Falcons fired up. They only score early. The Rams wallop traded loads in his own end zone. That's a two-point safety, and Green Central let it two-zip. It was turnover central after that. The Rams looking for more here. 
when they cough up the football, it's starting to rain. Pretty soon we get some lightning. The Falcons, they were trying to get something going here when they throw the pick. Early in the second quarter, we go with a big lightning delay, a long delay. Teams came back, played into the night, and South Central would knock off Green Central 29-28. Second year in a row, the South Central has come from behind and got the victory on opening night over the Rams of Green Central. Goldsboro and Newburn, the Bears, a new coach, Toy Now. He's over from Pamlico, and his Bears look good tonight. Newburn with the power game. Chandler Smith is in for the touchdown, and the Bears had a 6-0 lead. And then the Bears on the move again. The quarterback's going to call his own number. Gamont Screvin is in for the touchdown. Sneaking in on that right side for the score. Goldsboro desperate to get back in it. But check out this. It's an incomplete pass, but it's actually a lateral. That's a live ball. Kadre Dixon scoops and scores, and the route was on. Newburn looks like they're going to win this game. Zakeem Brooks powers his way into the end zone. Newburn leads at 26 to 6 in the third quarter when the game was suspended. And they're going to pick this one back up tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. A little breakfast and high school football coming up tomorrow. Kinston ranked fifth in our touchdown Friday top nine against Farmville Central tonight. The Jaguars opening at home. Our good friend Eddie Rhodes back on the sideline. Farmville Central. Kinston led 12 zip in this one. The Vikings looking for more. Kinston quarterback Demetri Holmes rolls out, finds Calvin Holloway, who's down to the one, and Holmes, the quarterback keeper. Touchdown, Vikings. It's 18 0. That's when the lightning and the rain rolled in, and the game would be suspended for a while. After a 45 minute delay, after that lightning right there, we would come back. Holmes will hit Josh Holloway for the touchdown, and Kinson's going to win big on opening night, knocking off Farmville Central by the final of 40 to 14. Now, right, let's take another time out. We've still got a couple of other games from tonight to show you. Plus, we'll take you back to last night for a little touchdown Thursday. Touchdown Friday is back after this. All right, welcome back to Touchdown Friday on this first week of the high school football season at North Pitt tonight. The Panthers welcome the Pam Pack to town. At least they thought they were going to play some football. It didn't turn out that way. Warming up, everything was fine. But once again, the weather rolled in before the game even started. They decided to delay the game because of the lightning. After waiting a while, they finally decided they're going to have to postpone things until Monday at 7 o'clock. So North Pitt and Washington washed out tonight. The coaches obviously disappointed. But again, they'll try again Monday at 7. You know, our kids are disappointed, and, and we wanted to get out here. We warmed up a couple different times, and uh, our kids were focused and ready to play. But you know what? We'll show up on Monday ready to play, too. Our kids know how to deal with adversity, and we've dealt with weather every single day out here. Uh, you know, we live in eastern North Carolina, so we know how to deal with this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, guys were, you know, guys are pumped up. They're ready to play. We've been going against each other. We just finished up a great camp, a great scrimmage season, and they were excited about playing a good opponent. But, um, you know, Monday's coming, and we're going to just strap them back on and be ready to play. Got a big night set for Monday because Southside and Aiden Grifton, they were scoreless with just over five minutes to play before halftime when that lightning rolled in. Some other great shots of the light. That's, it's really beautiful, but it's kind of scary at the same time. They got darker and darker, and then the heavy rains would settle in. So Southside and Aiden Grifton postpone, and they will kick it off again Monday night at 6 o'clock. Get to something to look forward to coming up on Monday. Wallace Rose Hill at East Bladen tonight. The Bulldogs would open up with a big win. The rain everywhere tonight. The Bulldogs showing off the running game early on against East Bladen. Gagne Roberts gets to the outside, picks up the first down. And that would become a trend tonight for Wallace Rose Hill because they can run the football. You keep it working on the buck sweep. Cameron Dalrymple, the Navy commit, blowing through arm tackles. He's in for the touchdown, and that made it 7-zip. East Bladen looking for an answer to stop the running game. It's a good return here from Zyquise Leach. And that would set the Eagles up with great field position, but the Bulldog defense stiff in this game all night long. They're going to throw the shutout in this one. And this one turns into a Wallace Rose Hill score. Roberts again, 29 yards on the play, and the Bulldogs are big winners on opening night. They go on the road at East Bladen, and they knock off East Bladen by the final of 44 to nothing. Let's go back to last night, Bertie and Riverside. Here goes more weather. Bad weather. Riverside with a big play here. Javion Griffin gets loose. He's got great blocking. Nifty run to the end zone. Tack on the two. Riverside led it eight to zip. Bertie's Falcons fought back. They get the short touchdown run here. This game went a long time last night. 
It was a high scoring game. Bertie took a 50 to 46 lead late. Then Javion Griffin ran the kickoff back 85 yards for the game winner. And Riverside knocked off Bertie 54 to 50 last night for Thursday night football leading into Touchdown Friday. All right, let's take our final break. Coming up next, we'll talk Pirate football. It's East Carolina and North Carolina State coming up a week from tomorrow. Plus, we've got the very best plays of the night with our extra points. We're back to wrap up week one on Touchdown Friday after this. All right, welcome back to Touchdown Friday. Coming up next week, East Carolina and North Carolina State to kick off the college football season in Raleigh. Earlier this week, the Pirates announced that sophomore Holton Aylers would start at quarterback this week for the Pirates. Aylers is the hometown prodigy, the former Little League record breaker who started D.H. Conley before heading to East Carolina. Pirate offensive coordinator Donnie Kirkpatrick watched Holton in Little League, and now he calls the shots for the Pirate QB. Coach K says this is a story that's still to be written. Well, first of all, he was never yay high. This young man was this young man was taller than me when I met him when he was about eight years old, I guess. Uh, he it, it's a great story, you know. what I'm saying right now uh, we think uh, that he gives us our best chance to go win the ball game, uh, lead this football team. It was a great competition. Uh, they still he has to go out there and compete every day. He had to compete today. He had some good plays today. He had some bad plays today. Uh, so I don't have time, you know, it is, it's a great story. I just don't have time to be involved in that right now because, you know, I can't get emotionally involved in that. Those are the things I think after he graduates, hopefully we've got lots of memories. We've got lots of stories. We've got lots of rings. We've got lots of trophies. We've got lots of pictures of me and him hugging, lots of pictures of us singing the fight song. And then we'll really enjoy that. And I'll say, you know, that was really special. I'm going to put one of those pictures up on my wall at my desk for sure. All right, recapping our scores from this first week of the high school football season for our Touchdown Friday Game of the Week. Jacksonville shut out Southwest Onsville by the final of 27 to nothing. Also down south, Northside Jacksonville beat Laney 14 zip. West Carteret and East Carteret both were blown out. New Hanover beat West Carteret 49 7. And West Craven knocked off the Mariners by the final of 58 to 6. The late, late score, Princeton beat Pamlico by the final of 44 16. And that game just became a final a couple of minutes ago. J.H. Rose in green will beat Wilson Fike on opening night 38-35. South Central came from behind and beat Green Central 29-28 would be that final. Kinston rolls past Farmville Central on opening night 40-14. Newburn leads Goldsboro 26-6 in the third quarter. They'll pick that one up at 9 a.m. in the morning. Washington and North Pitt, Southside and Aiden Grifton, both of those games they will play coming up on Monday night or complete the uh, Southside Aiden Grifton game. Of course, each week on our show, we present the very best plays of the night. We've got them from Thursday and Friday. These are our extra points for week number one of the high school football season tonight for the season debut of Touchdown Friday. Have a great weekend, everybody.